Let's talk about willpower. Because we were born into sin, we are totally subject to the sin around us. Amen? When we grow up in certain environments, we tend to be subjective to certain behaviors because of it. This is why I preach and teach so hard about family and trying to make sure that we don't do certain things in front of our kids. Amen. Certain arguments and disagreements should not be had in front of your children. When you get angry, there are certain things you should never say in front of your children. Never do. You don't be boxing husband and wife just, I mean, street fighting in the house. Children grow up with a disdain for marriage. With a bad understanding of it. Amen. Man, you got to come home sometimes. Oh, let's hear a clap on that. Amen. You done worked all week Saturday. You shouldn't go nowhere. Well, my job had me working six days a week. That's too much. Pray for something else. So you can have some time off if you have children. If you don't have children, you know, y'all, hey. But when you got children, your children need to see you in the house. I know I'm preaching in here. Amen. Amen. Wives, you got to be home too. Amen. Don't turn the iPad on and then leave. <laughs> turn cartoons on and then leave. <laughs> Amen. That's... That's, that's child abuse. Amen. Well, he's old enough. He's eight now. Amen. Where are you going that's that important? Amen. So we got to, we, there's certain things we have to do because these environments are going to dictate the outcome of our children. Their behavior. We are fashioning their behavior by them observing our behavior. Amen. Amen. Let them see you hug and kiss every now and then. Let them see your whole hands. Oh, I'm preaching in the house. Amen. Amen. Let them see you. Amen. Let them see you him up in the kitchen a little bit. Amen. Trap her in there and make her hug you. Yeah, the kids like, eh, eh, but it's doing something to them in their mind when they get older. They're going to be looking for a hymn. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If y'all ain't ever in the same room together, drive separate cars everywhere. Amen. Sometimes you don't drive separate cars, even if you have them. Don't be meeting everywhere. Y'all ride together. See? Amen. Ride together. Okay, how many cars you got? Ride together. Sometimes. You can't be too busy to be in love. Well, I'm preaching in the house. I know I am. On the first slide, I'm preaching a convicting word. Yeah, because you get used to each other. You just start assuming stuff, and then it's just okay. And it can't be all about the kids either. Amen. Let the kids see it be all about y'all's, y'all's love for each other sometimes. Amen. Some folk take care of their kids to avoid their spouse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I don't like him no more. Well, learn to. You learned to before? Did you know you learned to like the person you married? You didn't know that? Think back. You learned to like them. All that wasn't there in the beginning. You learned that. Learned. I made it a word. Learned. You learned that. So now don't come telling me, well, I don't really really like it. Learn it. Learn to like each other. Amen. I know you love him, but you got to like him too. 
I know you love her, but you got to like her too. Man, I'm preaching on this first slide. This is a marriage retreat message. Amen. Amen. But these environments are going to dictate our children's behavior. They're going to watch you. And if y'all all mechanically in love, then they're going to be mechanical. They're not going to trust it or believe it. When y'all are around, the kids are going to talk about how y'all don't like each other. You think you fooling millennials and Y and Zs? They got internet access and junk. They Google what y'all doing. What it mean when? <laughs> Amen. They just ask her. Siri. What it mean when they don't ever want to be in the same room together? I'm preaching in here. Psalms 5, 51 and 5. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. So we all started out in sin. Amen. And then when we grow up and develop, those environments will dictate our behaviors. Amen. Our willpower is only as strong as the examples we have. Man, y'all, when God told me this, Elder, this rocked my world. God spoke this to me years ago, and I wrote it down. But he spoke, our willpower is only as strong as the examples we have. What we witness and experience growing up is what shapes our ability to say no, hold our ground, and have fortitude. Your ability to say no is based on what you witnessed and experienced growing up. Man, that's good. That should be in a book. Without strong fathers, many times our willpower is low. Without positive role models, many times we lack the power to be diligent until we reach certain goals. <laughs> this is your willpower. If you don't have what it takes in the home, it reduces your willpower. Without stability, we may lack the power to stabilize our homes, relationships, and finances. Without positive words spoken around us, we will lack the ability to speak positively about ourselves and others. He don't know how to compliment you because he didn't grow up around complimenters. He don't ever compliment me, but when things is going bad, he the first one to stop. Well, that's what he grew up around. That's where he's strong. He's strong at the negative and not the positive. Because he didn't grow up around positivity. Same with her. She don't give me the things I need. She grew up not seeing what a man needs. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Yeah. Well, what if you don't train him up in the way he go? Train. You know what training is? That don't happen one time. You ain't going to pay landing money to train you and show up to one session. He don't care if you do, but you go, <laughs> as long as he get paid that first time. But you're training. It's a process. You look at yourself and say, there's something about myself that I want to change. And he's going to be the first to tell you, this is going to take time. We need to go over how you're eating, how you're sleeping, how you're exercising. Then we got to go over what do you want to see change. Then we have to implement the weight training and the cardio and all the different things. My son is smart. I'm telling you, he knows this stuff. But it happens over time. Over time. You almost have to have a gift to be a trainer because you have to be able to see the future. Amen. You don't judge it by how you see it when it first comes. 
Well, that's how God is with us. When we come to him, he's not concerned about how you look right now. He sees the future. Amen. But it takes training. This church is a training ground. This is boot camp. Ain't nobody perfect in here. We all in there getting worked on. Well, your home has to be the same way. So you can train your children up so that over time they'll get to where they won't depart from what they've learned. Amen. 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 God's power. Now this is why willpower just don't work. It don't work because we all grew up with something we shouldn't have grew up with. We all experienced something we should not have experienced. So because of that, it changed our willpower, weakened it, and lowered it because of the things we were exposed to when we were younger. Amen? Amen. So we need God's power. That's how somebody woke up this morning. My battery is low. Oh, well, just charge your phone, not my phone battery. My battery is low. God is our manufacturer, and because he made us, he is the best source of power for us. Yes, that's worth a clap. He made us. He's the best source of power for us. Imagine buying a cell phone. Without a charger, it will not continue to work. Right? It will not continue working. It may work for a while on what's left in the battery. Some of y'all saw that Friday night, right? It may work for a while on what's left in the battery. But it will eventually begin warning you, telling you, please plug into a power source. Right? Y'all ever been on one of them conversations where you're trying to get it all in and the red thing is flashing in the corner? Amen. Yeah, so it'll start warning you. Then if you neglect to plug it into a power source, what's going to happen? It's going to die. This is how God's power works for us. In the garden, man was connected directly to God. He walked among them in the cool of the day, meaning they were striving with him, connected to him. But after man fell because of disobedience, man was disconnected from his power source. Sure, man can make it on his own power for a while, but if he doesn't reconnect with God through Christ, he will eventually what? Die. Die. If you're disconnected from God, you will be in sin. And the Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have what? Sin. So because we've all sinned, we're subject to death. That's why we have to stay connected to life. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. God is constantly giving warnings to those that are disconnected from him. The Bible is full of these warnings where God is beckoning man back to himself. Sometimes God allows bad things to happen to you so you will get on your knees and seek him again. But he's constantly warning people and the Bible is full of it. If we ignore him, we will be spiritually dead. Joel 2 and 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. How much is all? all. With all your heart. With fasting and with weeping <clears throat> and with mourning. Sometimes you got to stop eating and start crying. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you got to let tears fall. Because of what God has done for you and thinking about where you could have ended up. What could have happened. Who you could have been. You can sometimes look at your own brothers and sisters and see how God has 
brought you. Amen. How far he's brought you. Look at your old neighborhood. You scared to drive by there now. God brought you out of that. Amen. Sometimes you need to just cry in thanksgiving. PJ was singing a song this morning. Sometimes you need to just thank him because he saved your soul. Made you whole. You're not the same. Amen. Sometimes that just warrants tears and gratitude for what he's done and where you could have been. You know all the trouble you got through and God rescued you out of it? Now you sitting in here with a family and children? You supposed to have been in jail. You supposed to have been locked up. You supposed to have been in an alley somewhere. Prostituting, selling your body. A drunk. Drug addict. And look at your life. Look what God did in your life. Sometimes I'm just fasting because I'm grateful. I'm grateful I can eat anything I want to eat. I'm grateful that I have things I could have never imagined. I'm grateful. Don't forget where he's brought you from. Amen. Amen. And he didn't owe you that. He don't owe us anything but death. He says, therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. God's power is available to all. It's not just the power that makes us buck and shout at church. Amen. Now, ain't nothing wrong with bucking and shouting at church. Hey, if you got a buck on your spirit, you know, that's just, that's, that's bucking. Bucking and shouting and jumping and hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. If you got the energy, you got to do the three things I said. Exercise, <laughs> sleep, eat right. You won't have that low battery where you can't buck. Your buck is just slow motion. But yeah, nothing wrong with it, but that's not what the power was for. Amen. Growing up sometimes I would see folks buck so hard to prove they had power. That's dangerous. They tear stuff up, get injured. This one lady at my daddy's church, I think is, is in Abilene, and she was the one that, you know, get was just a drunk all week in troubles, all that, but then Sunday come to church and try to prove to everybody that she's not going to go back out there no more. So one Sunday, it had been, she had messed up 10 Sundays in a row, so everybody was tired of it. You the lady that cried wolf now. Like, when ain't nobody believing, so she's thinking, I just got to do something extra today. I got to show her extra power. Man, that woman, the music started, she took off running and dove into the radiator. <laughs> Boom! She probably still hearing that. <laughs> I was on the piano or something, and I mean, I cracked up. <laughs> why did you do that? Knocked herself out. I mean, why would you do that? But she's proven that she, it's different this time. <laughs> oh, it's different this time. You ain't going to be in the alley the same way after hitting that radiator. Hitting that radiator, you going to have a little. Amen. <laughs> but she, yeah. People used to do that, prove the power, get in the microphone and, you know, one up each other during testimony service to prove the power. I hated testimony service. <laughs> That's death comedy jam. Why are you up there saying all of that, making it up as you go? 
just to prove that you got something nobody else have. And then, you know, if the one before you got everybody happy and all that, then you got to come up behind it and I'll do it. Oh, wait a minute, saints. Oh, I got another testimony. Oh, this one. <laughs> That's why we don't have that here. Amen. We ain't doing testimony, sir. You tell your testimony to somebody you know. Amen. Make a post on Facebook. We ain't doing it. Either. Amen. We ain't passing the mic, but that just in. Yeah. I got chased by a dog. Oh, I got chased by a gorilla. A gorilla a silverback. <laughs> and it's not just the feeling of <laughs> electricity that makes us feel something or it makes us feel we have something in us. You know that little jolt of electricity that kind of, hey! You can, get, you can get that listening to Luther. Can you stand the rain? Come on. Hey! Not Ralph and Johnny. Yeah, same jolt. Amen, same jolt. I had to work the New Edition concert when I was young, and women, all women, faint. Faint, just passing out. And I looked on the stage, cause I was on, on the end of the stage. I'm looking at them and I'm like, are they even really singing? I couldn't understand. Folks was feeling that same, the way they pass out in church. Amen. Slain in the spirit. Yeah, you slain at the concert at Six Flags. It's the same slain as here. There's no difference. We don't, that's why we don't slay. <laughs> I use the proper tense. We don't slay here. Amen. You fall up, I'm going to make you get up. Hurry, hurry, come, get, get back up. Let me help you out because you're going to be trying to figure out how to get it back up anyway. Amen. That's what happened. When you slain, you down there trying to figure out how do I dismount? How do I dismount this and still look like something happened? profound I still look like the Holy Ghost did something so how do I get up from this how do you recover you down there just like the best way to do it is cry yourself up then go to your seat that's the best way to do it Amen. Because that's not biblical. We don't slay in the spirit because it's not biblical. Didn't happen in the Bible. Didn't happen when the apostles prayed for folks and stuff. No. They were healed, delivered, and set free, but no, nobody passed out. The devil makes folks pass out so they'll miss what the speaker is saying. You'll miss your road to victory because you done passed out. Bible said that happened with Jesus. He was casting a demon out and the person died, uh, uh, pretended to be dead to not hear him. And I've cast demons out of people and they're just going conscious. Wake up. Wake up. Get up. Oh, but the Bible said the priest in the temple, the spirit was so thick that they just, they, they, they just, what did it say? Keep talking. Said they couldn't continue their obligations didn't say they fell out amen you better know kundalini when you see it that's witchcraft amen yeah but it's just a, so it's not just a feeling of electricity now sometimes you do feel that hey you're excited you're happy run around jump up and yell that's fine yeah, in order. Now, don't be running into nobody. But yeah, it's okay. That's all okay. Those are our emotions. We're excited. We do the same thing at football games. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all going to do the same thing tonight. Amen. That's right. At the Cowboys game. <laughs> yeah, it's just what we do as humans. Nothing wrong with it. But that's not all there is to the Holy Ghost. That's not what the Holy Ghost is for. Amen. It's not a sideshow. 
It's not for a show. It's not for applause. But it comes to operate what? The true test of being filled with the Holy Ghost is what you do next. That's it. Did you go home and tell everybody that you was hating on that you sorry? Did you repent to the folks that you cussed out and did wrong? You take the money back to the IRS you stole? Call the dude you bought the car from and say, hey man, I falsified some documents getting this car. Look at somebody. What? Yes, you falsified documents. Something's going to happen to the car. Something is going to happen. That car is going to cost you everything you cheated out of it. You don't get away with it. Every dime you lied about, you're going to pay. Yeah, you call a cable company and say, well, you know, these large downloads that's been happening at my house, I've been stealing from a fire stick. Call Amazon. I got a fire stick and y'all name ain't even on it. I don't even know why I'm calling it a fire stick. Yeah. That's how you know when somebody's filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go to your husband. Go to your wife. Hey, I'm sorry. I've been acting. I've been treating you so bad. I'm going to treat you better. See? Boy, boy, boy. Oh, it's tight in this house. That's filled with the Holy Ghost. Not what you do in here. Nobody care if you can float over the drums and all. <laughs> His spirit is old, me. <laughs> Get out of here with that witchcraft. Nobody care about that. How loud you can scream. Amen. It's not the Holy Ghost. The power of God hit everybody. It sound like the rainforest. That's not the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know I'm talking right. You grew up in that. You 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 had you was in church. That was that's how you knew the Holy Ghost was there. Rainforest. You know the power of God is in the house. Woo 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 the set of the planet of the apes. Don't mean that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. No, that's emotional stuff. What's she going to do when she get home? Is she going to be making that noise while she on the phone? Gossiping. Go home to that husband that don't come to church. That's why he don't come because he don't want to hear all that. He hear it at all. Woo, 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 woo. We move on. <laughs> I'm telling the truth at ABC. You know, just some stuff we not going to do. We not going to have folks showing out like that in the aisle to prove that they feel with something. How are you going to act when you leave? Amen. That's how I know. That's the fruit. By their fruit you will know. What fruit? The fruits of the spirit. You don't have any long suffering. How you feel with the Holy Ghost? God's power to save us and keep us alive comes from his spirit. He powers us up so we can live for him. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we could argue manifestations of the Holy Ghost all, you know, you could just keep arguing those. And I'm going to tell you, I've had various experiences with it. Filled with the Holy Ghost, word of knowledge comes every time I preach a sermon. But a different manifestation, manifestation shows up when I do a truth behind hip hop. Demons don't manifest in here. Have you noticed that? But when I do the truth behind hip hop, they always manifest. What's happening? It's a different manifestation of the Holy Ghost that comes upon me to do what I need to do. I'm delivering in a teaching mode in here. Delivering in a preaching mode when I do the truth on hip hop. It's just different. I can't explain it all the way, but it's just a different thing. Sometimes I feel fire come on my body when I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. Sometimes I feel fire when I touch and agree with somebody. Sometimes I don't. 
I don't base it on any of that. I base it on what I know. I know the power of God is real. So the manifestation, we ain't arguing over how it's manifested. Does it work? Yes. Got all these church, all this division because folk want it to happen the same way they saw it happen. It needs to happen like the day of Pentecost. Well, that was the first time it happened. You don't think God's going to come with a bang the first time? You're not going to see cloven tongues of fire on folks' heads. Don't have to do it. It's already here. It's already come. That was the entrance. Well, we going to lock up in here until we see it. Good luck. I'm going home. Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with all night prayer and praying all that. If that's what God has led you to do, amen. But I just don't, I, I'm, I'm a little different. Amen. We, I don't, we don't do shut-ins here. We just don't do it. Oh, but the, you know, the, no, the origin is a misunderstanding. But it's okay if you want to do it. Man, I'm not preaching against you. If you want to do that, keep on. We ain't locking up at ABC. Amen. We unlocking doors. We, 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 amen. We keeping the doors unlocked and keeping some of them open. 2 Corinthians 13 and 4. You know, I was preaching that. Uh, I was doing the truth behind hip hop part. Four. Curse of the Culture out in um, Lovius Murray's church, uh, Full Gospel, Holy Temple. And it was one of the greatest storms I've ever seen. Like, I think it was 28 tornadoes touched down right before we were going to have the service. And they start calling me and asked me, did I want to counsel? I asked the Holy Ghost, hey, do we count? God said, don't counsel. So this church holds, you know, 5,000 people. I think part three, we had 3,000 people in there. And so I'm just like, okay. So while we were in there, I'm giving instructions. I said, hey, shoot close, bring everybody up because we're probably going to have a couple of hundred folks. So everybody come close. I gave instructions to the cameraman, all of them. Y'all just shoot tight. We had 3,800 people showed up in that storm. And the power of God was so powerful in that room. The ushers ran in to tell us that the all of the doors around the sanctuary blew open at the same time. Yeah. Just a few years ago, I asked God, you know, uh, like, what, what, what was going on back then? Like, and even now, like, what, what, you know, what is it? And God said, you're changing the world. Now, somebody think that's an arrogant statement. You can think all that, but all y'all in here because of it. But you, <laughs> he said, so when what you're doing ha is going to have that effect, then it has a great entrance. It's like a, a great, powerful entrance. God was changing. He was warning the church. Have you not looked around? The churches are absent of young people God was trying to show the churches how to keep their young people by not allowing the spirit of hip hop to come and invade their churches and all the churches where it happened their kids are gone and demons have them these new artists are demons demons But it's got to be the power of God. He's got to power us up so we can live for him. Amen? Amen. Second Corinthians 13 and 4. I don't know why I said all that, but it just was on me. For, thou, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by what? Power of God. So he laid his life down. For we also are weak in him, 
but we shall live with him how? By the power of God. Holy Ghost power. Amen. Y'all believe somebody told me don't say Holy Ghost because something is wrong with ghosts. The Bible says Holy Ghost. Woo, people dumb. Dumb donkeys. Woo, dumb. Changing the Bible because of how you feel? Get that demon cast out of you. You won't be scared of ghosts. Amen. Hey man, boy, I'm more scared of some neighborhoods than I am ghost. <laughs> more scared of a roach than a ghost. Man, send the biggest ghost you got. Just don't send that winged cockroach. That's scarier to me. That right, man. That man. Send the exorcist girl. I can deal with her. She ain't gonna spit on me. But that wing roach, that hit different, Elder. I gotta get my wife. That's when I gotta go get my wife. Well, that was before we had now land and get them, but before that, baby. That's how I know demons live in Africa. I know some original ones are there. Some was, a lot of them was born there, demons, because when we went, remember that? Outside my room, it was a hissing cockroach like you see on TV, the one that make a noise. I said, uh-huh. I see what you're trying to do, devil, and I ran and closed the door. And what nobody gonna get the truth behind hip hop had one of y'all who, I don't remember which one of y'all killed it. The truth behind hip hop was over. Wasted trip. I ain't, I ain't no. 10,000 folk, I don't care how many it is. If you don't get this roach, this roach that's trying to sing to me, he's mocking me, he's saying stuff. They done sent it, the, the <laughs> witchcraft. Witchcraft sent it. And witchcraft almost won. <laughs> Amen. You better hope one don't fly in here while I'm preaching. The message is over. Summary! I'm out of here. That's all you're going to hear. Where the summary? I see the mic is on the ground. I got to get delivered from this. Deliver me, Lord. And the Lord spoke to me one time, told me, say, you ain't scared of them because if it's just you and the bug, you'll kill it. And that's true. Because if you let them go, you ain't sleeping that night. <laughs> that's going to be a long, that when you see him, when you eyeball him, you got to kill him then. Because if he get away, oh boy. Oh boy. Because can't let to hide like a roach. Oh, hey, see, I'm feeling that. Holy Ghost power. How did I get on all of that? The power of God's spirit gives us these things. These are the things that come with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Y'all don't mind if I teach you today. These are the things that come. When you feel with the Holy Ghost, this is what comes. First of all, the power to change. Amen. Romans 8 and 11 says, Moreover, if the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his spirit. Your mortal bodies alive through his spirit who what? Lives in you. So when the power of the Holy Ghost comes, it's the power to change. Things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Now I have God's will power. Power over my will. So where they failed in my upbringing, failed in the, what I was exposed to, what I saw, what I heard, what happened to me, all of that may have failed, but now there's a greater power. And I don't have to rely on my willpower. Because 
the power to change lives in me. Power to be led by God. John 14 and 26, but the comforter, which is the what? He said, holy what? Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You can be led by God. Taught all things and all things brought to your remembrance by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? The power to lead others, others to God comes in you when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to lead somebody to the Lord. Amen. Well, that's the preacher's job. No, the power of the Holy Ghost will cause you. How do you have, you can't contain the fire of God. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up. How am I going to sit here on fire and not tell anybody? If you can quench it like that, I'm not sure you have it. You only feel with the Holy Ghost in church, then you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I hate that old word. Don't say it, because it's a him. And they start all that TBN stuff. It's a it and a him. It is. It's a it and a him. It's him as a person of the Trinity, and it's a it what it does to you. Amen. Acts 4 and 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great power gave the apostles what? Witness of the resurrection. Power over sin. Amen. Holy Ghost gives you power over sin where you can tell sin no. You have the power. Look, somebody say, you have the power. Come on, quote he man. You have the power. <laughs> you have the power over sin. Y'all remember he man? You know, if they made it now, it'd be she man. <laughs> but the power over sin, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the power to tell sin no. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. You do. Then you have the power to feel real bad if you didn't. Holy Ghost will convict you and make you feel like trash. That's how you know you feel with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because we don't do everything right. And we feel bad when we don't. Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then. Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same person. And ain't same person, different functions. It's the same thing. Amen. You know, people will make a doctrine over anything just to get away from some other. They want to leave a church, they'll come up with something. Well, we're the Holy Spiriters. So we don't do the Holy Ghost. We believe the Holy Spirit. The Ghost was a different dispensation of the acts and works of the Spirit. Ooh, shut up. Man, they just, I, they, boy. Hmm. Yeah, but if you walk in the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Every time you fulfill the lust of your flesh, you wasn't walking with the Spirit. Man, I just preached a sermon. Right there, that little sentence I said. There's no way you can be walking in the spirit and fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know why you can't do that? Because the Bible just said you can't. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill. So look at somebody and say, keep walking in the spirit. Power to do great works. Mark 16. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Oh, I got something on that in part 14. That's going to be real good. Speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. Not be scared of them. Amen. Not mask up and get away from them. Not lock themselves in the house and wave at them from the window. Not watch church online because they don't want to be around the sick. He said, they're going to lay hands on the sick. What if they got COVID? Is that sick? Lay hands on the sick. Is COVID worse than leprosy? That's who they was laying hands on back then. Growing hands and fingers and toes back. By the power of God. They shall lay hands on the sick. And the Bible said, what's going to happen? They going to catch it? They lay hands on the sick. Are they going to catch it? They're going to lay hands on the sick. And the Bible said, they shall what? Recover. Summary. When we connect with God, we become powerful because of it. It's not the power to grandstand or power to reference when we are telling our testimony. That's not what it's for. It's actual power that empowers us to operate like model citizens in a darkened world. God's spirit. Look at somebody and say, God's spirit is powerful. What would be the point of serving a powerful God if we remain powerless? Y'all don't know how deep that statement is. Think about it. What's the point? What's the point of coming to church if y'all all scared to come to church? <laughs> What's the point of coming to church and singing, Our God is an awesome God with a mask on? It's ridiculous. How awesome is he? How powerful is he? And are we serving a powerful God without power? Seem like if we're serving a powerful God, we're serving him because of the power he has over our lives. That's why I serve him. If he's all powerful, he has power over my life. So why do I fear for my life? God wants us to use his power to make us better in this life and to make our world a better place. The world is suffering because of the lack of God's power being exhibited. All the devil did in 2020 was call a bluff. He called a bluff. Yeah. Yeah. He put some stuff out there to see who was really saved. And that's when you saw the tongue talkers, fire walkers, hikama shandara conchilas. You saw all of them shaking in their boots, hiding in their houses, scared to death of death. Yeah. Devil called it bluff. Oh, y'all, oh, oh, y'all making a lot of rainforest sounds in this church. See if you can make them sounds with mask on. Let's see if you can talk to each other six feet away from each other. <laughs> In the church? In the church? <laughs> yeah. So now the world is suffering because they're like, man, if the church is scared, we all lost. God's church is 
don't have any power, where is the power going to come from? I'd be mad if I paid money to a church and they built the building and we can't use it. Give me my money back. I helped build this church and the door locked. I know, hey, hey, amen. But the world is suffering because of the lack of God's power being exhibited. It's time for the adamant believers to stand up and show how God's power keeps us in perilous times. Amen. Amen. Closing with this one scripture. Thought this message was going to be short, but it wasn't. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do what? Way more than you can ask or think. Exceeding and abundantly above all. How much is all? All that we ask or think, but it is according to what? The power that worketh in us. Everyone stand to your feet. Power. Yes, you need to get somewhere and pray that God fills you the way you need to be filled with this Holy Ghost. But that requires an emptying out of certain things. For many, there is no room for the Holy Ghost because so much is in the way. You know, your trauma, your pain, the pain of your past can become an idol to you where you hide behind it and you don't get to experience God because you won't let him deal with what is really wrong with you. Yeah. But today, hey, you want to be filled with the power of God? I want you to just come up. We're going to be filled. Just come on up and be willing. I'm going to let it all go because I didn't think I'd be in this place. And it ain't going to be about what you feel in here as much as it is what you feel out there. We got to have the power of the Holy Ghost to stand up to this world. To the wickedness, lies, and deceit. We got to be filled with the Holy Ghost to stand up, some of us, to our own families who taunt us because of our beliefs. We got to be filled with the Holy Ghost to stay consistent in what we know to be true. So that we don't change when the world changes. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need his power. We need his power. What key is that, PJ? F sharp? There is power in the name there is power in the name. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. No greater name. Come on, just lift your hands. I know. Let's just sing that to him. There is power. There is power in the name. There is power in the name. Greater name I know. No greater name I know. Name of Jesus. No greater name I know. Father God, we just come before you 
believing that you have all power believing that your power is necessary for the times we live in for us to walk the right way to be who you expect of us we know that our willpower has been tarnished it's been damaged our willpower has been damaged tarnished because of experiences and what we've been through and what happened to us and all the various things that the enemy has done in our lives our willpower is just not gonna cut it we need the power of your Holy Ghost so we pray right now and ask God for an infilling of your precious power your precious Holy Ghost fill our lives Father God fill our hearts our minds fill us Father God until we are full bring the fullness of your power into our lives God and help us God to receive it help us to receive it and function accordingly according to it so that we can experience you like never before fill us Lord fill us Lord fill us Lord Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Power to heal us. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Power in the name, in the name of Jesus. One's the work in Paris. Go and sing it again. There is power. There is power. God can do it. Hallelujah, anything. Jesus. Yes, in the name. Hallelujah. All the power. It's still in the name. No greater name. No greater name. No greater name. I know. No greater name. I know. Oh, the power is in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Teach us and train us, Lord, that your spirit will grow in us and we'll understand the things we need to give up, the things we need to stop, the things that are in your way, the things that are hindrances. Teach us in this building, in this ministry. Show us what we need for our families, for our marriages, for our homes, for our futures in you. And God, we will be ever so quickly to give you all of the praise, all the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name. Come on, go to your seats and just keep singing it. There is power. And it's in the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Power belongs to God and it's in the name. There is power. Hallelujah. Take this home with you. 
take this home with you. Let God fill every avenue of your life.